So far, so good um, in terms of preparations. Um, we learned from the experience of the last um, elections conducted, um, the national elections, meaning presidential and national assembly elections, particularly in the area of logistics. I'm happy to say that learning from that experience, the Commission has delivered all the materials, uh, sensitive and non-sensitive, to the states in readiness for such a day's election. In turn, the states have delivered the materials to the local governments, our offices in the local governments, and then the local governments will move the materials tomorrow to the wards. And then from the wards, we move the materials to the polling units along with personnel at first light on Saturday, the 9th of March, so that we can open the polling units in good time. In terms of the sheer scope of what is going to happen on Saturday, is far bigger than what uh, we conducted um, about two weeks ago. The presidential constituency, yes, is national, but it's only one constituency. We have 109 senatorial districts, 360 federal constituencies. So in all, we conducted elections into 470 constituencies. But on Saturday, we are going to conduct elections uh, for 29 um, governorship positions nationwide. 991 state constituencies and 68 area councils in the federal capital territory, making a total of 1,082 constituencies in all. We are prepared and truly, truly, we have learned our lessons from the presidential elections. Now, uh, is there anything, I mean, apart from the obvious, is there anything that would be essentially different about the process of this election as opposed to the one conducted almost two weeks ago? Well, the Commission doesn't change its processes from one election to another. Um, the changes come in a big way. Um, but certainly in the middle of conducting elections, unless it is absolutely inevitable, you don't change processes. So it's more or less the same process. Unlike the previous election where we had three ballot boxes, uh, distinguished by the, the color of lead of the boxes were the green, for House of Representatives, we had the black for senatorial and the red for presidential. Um, on Saturday for state elections, we're going to have two ballot boxes uh, for governorship and for state assembly elections. Uh, in the FCT area, in, in the FCT, in the FCT where we're going to have the area council elections, there will also be two ballot boxes. One for election of chairman of the area councils and the other one for the election of councillors for the council. So it is basically the same. The size of the ballot paper for governorship election depends on the number of parties contesting for an election in a particular state. Uh, I think the highest is Imo with 68 political parties, and then it varies depending on the state. Uh, but for the state elections, uh, state assembly elections, we are going to have all the political parties on the ballot papers because it's very difficult customizing the ballot papers to 991 constituencies with the risk that if you omit the logo um, of a political party from the ballot paper, the party can, after the election, approach the election petition tribunals and argue that uh, it has been unlawfully ex excluded and the penalties nullification of the election. So I've been very careful in that respect. However, where there are clear-cut court orders that party A or party B should not be on the ballot, we took care to ensure that the party is not on the ballot. Um, like the case of Rivers, for instance, that is a party that is not going to be on the ballot in River State. So in terms of processes and procedure, it's the same thing. Um, voters will be accredited uh, by the use of the smart card reader, um, compatible with the PVCs that the Commission issued. And thereafter, if they're successfully accredited, they'll be issued with two ballot papers. They move into the voting cubicles, make their choices, and then drop the ballot papers into the relevant ballot boxes for the election. As always, because of this menace of vote buying, uh, we are um, advising voters that they shouldn't go into the voting cubicles with their mobile phones or any photographic um, device, but they are free to use their mobile phones within the vicinity of the polling units. So it's the same process and the same procedure.